Tell me that doesn't look majestic. Hello everybody, today I have something pretty special for you guys. It is a product that I'm incredibly excited about and that I hope gains more popularity from this video and in the future. It is the StellarMate Pro Control Unit. My name is Ali Labedli and welcome to Astra Pharma. So what is the StellarMate Pro exactly? Well, in my opinion, it's a combination of four different things. Firstly, it is a power distribution unit. Secondly, it is a USB hub. Thirdly, and perhaps most notably, it's a control unit that helps you control all your equipment during an imaging session or if you have a remote observatory, similar to another product that we're going to discuss later on. And finally, it's just a pretty cool gadget when you put it on top of your telescope like this. So the StellarMate Pro has a total of four USB 3 inputs, two USB 2 inputs, and an HDMI input, USB-C, Ethernet, an auxiliary port, and also it has four DC outputs, 12 volts of course, two dual hero controls, and also a variable DC output. And I don't know what this input is called, but it's for the stepper motors. And it also connects to DC power using an XT60. All right, I know what you're thinking. It's just another ASI Air. Well, not exactly. The ASI Air actually, you heard that voice? just turned on. The ASI Air actually itself uses the same drivers used here on the StellarMate Pro and the same platform, the Indy platform, which is actually developed by the people who develops the StellarMate Pro and the StellarMate OS. Yet they limit their product to only use ZWO cameras, focusers, and most likely in the future mounts. I'm not criticizing ZWO for their choices, it's their product, their rights, and I've actually used the ASI Air before. I think it's one of the most brilliant control units that you can purchase. However, if you want something that doesn't have any limitations, then I think the StellarMate Pro is the right choice for you. You can control virtually any astrophotography product, even some of the most unpopular ones. I mean, my setup here is not the most simple, yet everything works fine, as you will see later on in this video. The StellarMate OS, the app, and also the desktop platform, in my opinion, has a lot more choices, a lot more versatility than what you can do with the ASI Air. And that's why I'm here to showcase the product. Today, I'm only going to showcase the app and how to use it in the simplest way possible. I'll completely reset the StellarMate Pro and I'll also completely reset the iPad app that I'm going to use. And we're going to set up a new profile. We're going to set up our primary and secondary imaging train. And then we're going to move to the roof of the house to have our mock imaging session. So after you connect all your equipment, you're going to hear a beep when the StellarMate turns on. And then you're going to connect to the StellarMate hotspot. I'm going to put the password right here for you to log in. So you're going to be faced with this home screen. If you have or own the StellarMate OS, you can just simply sign in. I'm going to do that or else you can click on register and scan the barcode at the bottom of your StellarMate. So I'm just going to log in real quick and I'll be right back. All right. So now that I'm logged into the StellarMate hotspot, I can simply press on rescan. I'm going to allow it to access my local networks. It's going to scan for the device. And hopefully if you've done everything right, it's going to detect it. It's not going to take that long for it to log in in the future. It's just the initial login. So actually, before I do anything, I'm going to press on settings. Actually, I'm going to press on device. And then I'm going to click this little gear icon next to the hotspot mode. And I'm going to select my home Wi-Fi just so that I can access the internet through the StellarMate and check for updates if there are any. So it's going to tell you that you'll have to connect to the same Wi-Fi that the StellarMate is connected to. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click yes. And then I'm going to go on the settings app and I'm going to connect to my home Wi-Fi. So here we are, I'm back on the StellarMate app. I've connected to my home Wi-Fi and rescanned and connected to the StellarMate unit. What I'm gonna do first, like I said, is check for an update. So I'm gonna click on device, and then I'm gonna click on VNC. It's gonna open up the desktop interface within the StellarMate unit. And then I'm gonna open up StellarMate tools. You can see it right here on the left. And then I'm gonna click on software update. This is gonna check if there's any update. All right, so it says StellarMate is already up to date. I did this last night, but I just wanted to show you the process. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to close the StellarMate tools and I'm going to go back to the main app. So we're going to start or we're going to create our first profile. I'm going to hit plus and then I'm going to start selecting all my equipment when it presents me with this menu. So my mount is an EQ mod mount. It's an EQ8R. So I'm going to select it, EQ mod mount. My filter wheel is a ZWO filter wheel. So I'm simply gonna type ZWO, and then I'm gonna select the EFW. And my camera is also a ZWO 2600mm. So I'm gonna collect, select uh, ZWO CCD. And my guide camera is also the 174mm. 
which is also a ZWO CCD. I also have a focuser, which has a rotator. So I'm going to select the Isato Arco because that's my focuser rotator combination. And I'm going to name this profile edge, edge D, nine and a quarter inch with the 0.7 reducer. Save. So when I save this profile, I can click start and it's gonna connect to all my equipment. So then it's gonna present with this menu. So I'm gonna click before I edit my primary and secondary imaging train, I'm gonna actually input my telescope. So I'm gonna click on telescope, I'm gonna add a telescope, and I'm gonna say it's my Edge HD, or actually the vendor is Celestron. It's an Edge HD. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain. We just fix this. The aperture is 234, I think. I'm not sure. But I know the focal length is 1635 millimeters. I'm going to click save. So there it is right here, F7. Yep, so I actually got the aperture right. So I'm going to go back to this menu. I'm going to edit my primary imaging train. The mount has already been selected for me. The focuser has already been selected for me. The rotator as well. I'm just going to edit the telescope. Select the one that we just created. My camera has been selected for me. I'm not going to select a guide camera simply because this is not the guider imaging train. And then I'm going to close. Now I'm going to click on my secondary. And I'm going to actually change the camera from the 2600 to the 174 mm, my guide camera. And I'm going to tell it to guide via the mount because I'm going to be using pulse guiding. And I think everything else is fine. Actually, I'm, I don't have a rotator, so I'm simply going to turn this off. I don't have a filter wheel for this imaging train, so I'm going to turn it off. I don't have a rotator for this imaging train. I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to select the same telescope because I'm guiding with an OAT. If you're guiding with a guide scope, then you would create a new scope with the specification of the guide scope and you would select it here. So I'm going to close off of this and I think that's everything. Let's just double check. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm going to close off from here. So actually it connected to all the equipment when I press on ECOS and then I'll click on the Indy control panel to check if everything has been connected. So it seems my mount is not connected. So I was having trouble connecting to my equipment and then I realized that I didn't turn on the power outputs of the StellarMate. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to click on the power option and then I'm going to turn on all four power outputs right there. Now they should all be turned on. So when I go back to the setup menu and click on start, hopefully everything's going to connect fine. It says mount unparked, which indicates that the mount did connect this time. And there we are, everything is connected. So what you want to do at this stage is simply check if all your equipment are functioning properly. For example, you might want to see if the mount slews or if the camera captures. I'm slewing the mount here. As you can see, everything works out fine. And I think that's it for now. We're going to go up to the roof and we're going to continue there. I've set up my telescope, pointed it north and balanced it. And I'm going to show you the entire process of polar alignment of the first autofocus routine that you're going to do. And then to the target slewing and centering and finally to the image capturing and the sequence module. Here we go. As you can see, as soon as I clicked on the app, it connected to the StellarMate because I'm already connected to the hotspot through the iPad's Wi-Fi. And here is the profile that we created earlier and I'm simply gonna press start. It connected to the Indy driver. Mount has been parked or it was already parked. So let's see, let's go to the ECOS module and let's check our Indy control panel to see if all our equipment are connect, connected properly. This is the mount. I think that's that looks perfect. This is the StellarMate Pro, my focuser and my rotator. I'm gonna set my rotator limit to zero just because I know that with this particular rotator, it needs to have zero limits for it to function properly. I'm gonna check my guide camera, which is connected properly here. And I'm gonna check my imaging camera, also connected properly, and my filter wheel. And I'm also gonna check if all my filters are set properly. So I have them in this configuration, luminance, red, green, blue, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. So as you can see, 
everything works out perfectly. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna take a quick one second exposure. I'm not gonna turn on, actually I will. I'm gonna turn on cooling. I'm just gonna put it to zero. And I'm actually just gonna go straight ahead to the focus routine. So this is my focus module right here at the top left corner. I'm gonna click autofocus. It says autofocus operation started. I can see the images it captures here. So this is the first image and the first point, hopefully, on the V-curve. I can hear the focus are moving, so it seems to be working fine. So here we go. The general shape of the graph is coming into view. I wouldn't worry too much about the differences here because I'm, again, in Bolton Nice Guys where the seeing is completely terrible. So this is actually perfect as a focusing routine. And the focusing routine now is complete and we can go to the next step of the process. What I would do right now is a quick polar alignment. It's not gonna be quick for me, but it's gonna be quick for you because I kind of randomly pointed it north and did my setup. So to polar align, you wanna click on the alignment module and it's gonna, it's gonna have a few options. Load and slew, if you have a previous picture that you wanna slew to or previous fits file, you can uh, slew to it here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the polar alignment module. I'm gonna click start. It's gonna take its first image. Well, first it's gonna unpark the mount. And now it's gonna take its first image. It's gonna plate solve it and it's gonna slew to the desired location. I have it here set on west. As you can see, it's slewing now. I can tell from the first image that the polar alignment is terrible. <laughs> so it's slewed to the second uh, location and it's gonna take its second image and plate solve it. And there we are, the second image solved with no issue. And I think it's now slewing to the third location and it's capturing its, its uh, third image. And here we go, the image was solved and my polar alignment is, as expected, terrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix my polar alignment here. I'm just gonna tell you real quick that there is two steps or two techniques for polar alignment in the StellarMate app. The first is what we're all used to, it plate solves and refreshes every one second or whatever duration that you set it in. And the second one is for you to point at a star and then move it to the correct location. But you can't do that if the error is too large and your field of view is very narrow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and have plate solve clicked as you can see here or checked and I'm gonna click refresh and I'm gonna go ahead now and start my polar alignment. There we go, this is perfect. And now I'm just gonna simply stop the process and I'm gonna park the mount so that it would return to its home location or its home position. So that's it, the mount is now parked again. It's polar aligned. I don't know how long that took me, but I'm gonna put it right here. And now we can move to the next step of the process, which is gonna be selecting a target. It's gonna capture the image. And then it's gonna download it. Yep, it's correcting its position right now. As you can see, I can hear it slewing. In progress, mount arrived at the target location. And now it's capturing its second image. Hopefully it's not gonna take more than that. And there we are. I don't know if it actually corrected again or not. There's too much noise here on the roof. Completed. I think that was it, it successfully center the target, so let's just check and take a one second exposure. Perfect, I can see the galaxy right there. Of course, it's very faint here in the light polluted skies. 
and the focus is actually pretty good as well. So what would the next step of the process be? Like in every astrophotography session, you might want to start your guiding right now. So I'm just going to go on the guide module. I'm going to take a quick exposure to see if my OAG is actually in focus. It seems pretty good. Well, actually it's pretty out of focus, but I'm just not going to bother focusing it right now because I'm not really going to capture anything. So let's just calibrate. So let's see, it's calibrating right now. I'm just gonna wait for it to calibrate and then it's gonna start guiding. While it does this, let's just set up our first sequence. So what you wanna do is you wanna add a preset. Let's just say this one is your luminance. You select your filter. You select the temperature, your gain, your offset. I want it to dither every one frame. My exposure time is gonna be three seconds and I want it in raw 16 bits and encoded in fits. And then I'm gonna click save and then I'm gonna click add to sequence and that's gonna add the first sequence which is right now set to three frames of luminance each with three seconds. And the calibration just finished. So let's just add another sequence just so that we can see it working. I'm gonna add the red filter. I'm gonna say red. Oh, but and by the way, the type, it's uh, the type of actual exposure that you want. Light frame, a bias frame, a dark frame, or a flat frame. So I'm going to click on the red filter. Again, the temperature is going to be zero. And I want it in raw 16 bits. The same gain, the same offset. And I want it to dither every one frame. I'm going to save it, and I'm going to add it to sequence. So now, now I have two filters, luminance and red. And... If you can see right here, I think the guiding should have started by now. And it did, right now it's guiding at 0.6 RMS, which is not bad, considering the bad seeing and the light blue skies. So I'm just gonna leave it guiding here. And I'm gonna just show you real quick where the filter settings are, if I can remember. I'm gonna go to sequence, and then I'm gonna go to settings. And here you have your sequence settings. So I have mine set as follows. If you just want to take a look at those. And I have my filter focus or autofocus exposure time. I have two seconds for all my broadband filters, 40 seconds for my narrowband filters. It's a bit much, but here in the light blue skies, you need longer exposures, especially if you're imaging with three nanometer filters. And my guide limits. So I have it, I don't have any deviation limits or anything like that but I do have it set to refocus every 60 minutes and I also have for each filter autofocus turned on so when it switches it should run an autofocus routine when it changes filters so now that we are guiding we have our sequence set let's just start the sequence so I'm going to click start sequence All right, so I'm back to where I was before. Like I said, I've updated the StellarMate software and I've contacted Justin, the developer of StellarMate, who had to remotely access my unit and fix a few issues. You won't face these issues in your unit. So I've reset the target, as you can see right here. I've reprogrammed that same sequence from before and we're currently guiding at 0.7 RMS, as you can see. So let's start the sequence again and see if that fixed the issue. So I'm gonna hit go. There you go. That's how you would use your StellarMate Pro in the most simplest way possible. I am going to make another video discussing the scheduler, which I think is the distinguishing factor and the distinguishing feature actually on the StellarMate and the Ecos system. But that's going to be in a future date. Let me go back downstairs, take a quick shower, and we're going to finish our discussion.